Hi there, I'm Larry Gifford, radio consultant and talent coach at LarryGifford.com. This is a weekly show about Radio 4 Radio. You can find all 69 episodes only at RadioStuffPodcast.com. Uh, our top story today, when do you know if a radio stunt has gone too far or gone wrong? In the UK, Scotland is taking a vote for independence, which triggered Bob FM host Graham Mack in England to do this. Let me let me just I'm gonna I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this song. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop it. I don't know. What's going on? Uh, on well, the Scots have been the Scots have been winding me up uh, uh, this week. You know, we're so close to the end of the United Kingdom as we know it, and then we have to play that. You know, Scottishness. He says he'll walk 500 miles, but come on, a lot of them don't want anything to do with England. You don't want anything to do with England. After all we've done for you, for 300 years, we've put up with your bagpipes, your spicy eggs, your hairy cattle, your short-ass ponies, your men in skirts, and the crankies. You ungrateful bunch of whiskey swigging haggis munching caber tossers from now on this is it right from now on this radio station is banning anything scottish including the proclaimers so all scottish artists off the playlist you can't do you, pl- you can't just ban scottish pl- I'm, I'm doing it now i'm going to go through the w- through the playlist anything that's scottish is coming off we're not. We're, we're going scot free on Bob FM. So the reaction on Twitter has been a bit nasty, with characterizations from classless to racist. The radio trades picked up the story yesterday. It quickly became one of the more clickable articles in recent history. Is it offensive or is it amusing? Well, let's talk about it with Graham Mack, PD and Morning Guy of Bob FM. Hi, Graham. Welcome back to the radio stuff. Nice to be back with you, Larry. Congratulations on a great podcast, by the way. Love it. Oh, thank you. Now, where did this idea come from? Well, it was one of those things that, you know, when you're talking around the office and you're saying, what's this with this Scottish independence? What do they want independence for? Why can't they? For 300 years, you know, they've been part of the United Kingdom. Why do they want this? Surely it's all going to cost us money because surely... Two individual countries can't be run as efficiently as one. Someone's going to have to pay for that. And and in the end, uh, it was me who said, uh, why don't we just ban Scottish music? And then the general manager, who also happens to be the owner of the radio station, went, yeah. (laughs) And so (laughs) when you get that, then you can move on, because without that, nothing's going to happen. Yeah, and so it was one of those things. It was just... Just chat in the office, and, and away we went. So what kind of reaction were you expecting? Well, I knew it would be unpopular north of the border. Uh, I didn't know how, how vicious some of the Scottish nationalists would be on social media. So we were expecting, a, a, you know, a, a few problems there. Um, we thought that there might be a few people who were Bob listeners might be upset and there were a couple but really nothing nothing major yeah we were we were expecting to get noticed really if you know to be totally honest we were expecting bob fm to get noticed and that's what it's all about and are you happy with the results yeah i'm not happy about some of the names i've been called on twitter (laughs) but but um I'm, i'm happy with the results in that we've definitely been noticed um we're in, you know, a couple of Scottish newspapers. Um, we're uh, on the BBC Scotland website, you know, which is kind of what you want. And there's a lot of people talking about the radio station and, and is it the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. We've, we've tapped into the biggest story in the UK right now. It, it, you know, Scottish independence yesterday's uh, Mail Online. The first eight stories were all about Scottish independence. So, yeah. So how do you feel about the stunt 
a couple of days into it. it. Yeah, it's going it's going good. We need to keep it going up until the election. The election happens on a week today. So we just need to keep it alive and keep it going till then. We've also announced that if Scotland, this morning we announced that if Scotland decide to stay part of the United Kingdom, that the following morning's breakfast show will be nothing but Scottish music as a celebration. So Now, I, was I, that in the original plan or is that a reaction to the feedback you've been getting? It wasn't in the original plan, but there wasn't much of an original plan other than <laughs> banning Scottish music, to be fair. But it just seemed like the right thing to do, be, you know, after after the reaction. Yeah, I suppose it was a reaction to the reaction. So so what else are you telling your listeners and, and maybe even advertisers who are kind of squirmish about what you're doing? Well, it's funny you should say that because, you know, the, the, the Scottish nationals that have been nasty to us on social media have also uh, taken it further. They have contacted uh, advertisers. Uh, advertisers in the hospitality industry have had nasty things written about them on TripAdvisor. Um, and so our advertisers, those advertisers have been in touch and have said that, you know, they're a little bit worried. And so it's just been a job of reassuring them that, you know, just because some people in Aberdeen are upset about this, it doesn't mean that the people who listen to Bob FM, that the, the ear holes that you're buying when you buy your advertising are any less valuable than they were before we did the stunt. And so, so far, we haven't had anybody drop advertising as a result, even though they are you know you've seen the nasty tweets i've been getting well the advertisers have been getting that too are you concerned you may be hearing from ofcom we probably will hear from ofcom we've been we've been told many times in email in uh, in voice messages that have been left on the office phone they don't like ringing the on-air phone fun enough huh. but they leave the, the they leave messages on the office phone saying that they they reported us to ofcom and the police i don't expect us to hear from the police but i, I would imagine ofcom will demand to, to the audio from from the stunt and other audio around it, and we'll have to send that to them and see what they say. But I should, I would be very surprised if we don't hear from Ofcom. So, so what do you, what do you say to the people who are calling you these names and calling you a racist and a xenophobe and all these things? You know, how do you, how do you respond to those criticisms? Well, they've got the freedom to say that, and and really, if I said something that offended them and they were offended. Well, I can't argue with that. I mean, if you if I said something and you were offended, well, I can't say you weren't. You were. And I have to say, well, I'm really sorry. That wasn't my intention to offend you. My attention, my intention was to get some notice for the radio station. It's a publicity stunt. And anybody that enjoyed it, my intention was to make them laugh and, and, and talk about us and, and have fun with it. So you can say what you like. The intention was not racist or... You know, the intention, it was a publicity stunt for a local radio station. All right. So, Graham, let's let's think about this from a couple of weeks from now when this is all blows over and you can sort of digest what's going on. Um, let, let's let's imagine what some of the lessons might be that we can take away from this moving forward. First lesson before you do anything like this, have a meeting with all of the staff in the radio station, including engineers cleaners anybody who is likely to pick up and answer a telephone at any time of the day or night and tell them that if they get somebody extremely abusive on the other end of the phone to merely ask for their phone number and pass the phone number on to the program director who will deal it deal with it have that meeting before you do anything what happened oh nothing major happened but people get upset you know if you get someone who's maybe you know young maybe female feels vulnerable in a radio station takes a call and the person on the other end of the phone is abu is as abusive as you've read on the tweets that have been sent to me personally they get really upset and freaked out and don't know what to do and all the rest of it you need to have that conversation just say take the number pass it on to the program controller great great advice great advice all right, Grandma, we wish you the best of luck, and uh, hopefully you're, you're spinning a bunch of Scottish tunes in a week. I hope we are. Thank <laughs> you very much, Larry. All right, thanks. So that's the uh, Radio Stuff Podcast this week. You can email the show at radiostuffpodcast at gmail.com. 
Uh, be sure to read my blog at LarryGifford.com. I know a lot of you have, and you're sharing the posts. There's a big hot post up there right now. It's getting some traction about radio's spot problem and the need for a new revenue-generating idea. Plus, you can watch the new Ask Larry video blog. I answer three questions about radio on video every week. Uh, it's all at LarryGifford.com. And think of me if you're in the need of a radio consultant or a talent coach. Uh, find more radio stuff at radiostuffpodcast.com. Have fun, be creative, support each other, and share your radio stuff. <laughs> <laughs>